Hey, welcome back to Global Environment. Uh, today we're going to talk about nuclear energy. And I often ask my classes uh, during the semester when we first start out this unit to make a list of all the things they think of when they think of nuclear energy. And, you know, you, you could quick brainstorm. What do you think of? And a lot of times people think of very negative uh, things related to, to nuclear energy. They'll think about Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, uh, nuclear waste, and that, those kinds of things. And, you know, that, that's, those, th that is important. That is important. We can't pretend that there aren't risks when it comes to nuclear energy, but we also can't forget that there are risks when we use what we're generally using right now as fossil fuels. And just to put things into perspective for you a little bit, um, if you look at um, some estimates of the radiation that's um, usually emitted through nuclear energy every year, um, it, it, it's pretty much less than what is emitted by the burning of coal. So there's more uh, radiation emitted through the burning of coal generally than through the nuclear in industry. But we, we can't forget that there are waste problems, and the waste from nuclear energy can last thousands, tens of thousands of years. So it's kind of a Faustian bargain. So let's get into it a little bit. Okay, so, um, you know, we're going to talk about fission reactors. Fusion is 30 years away right now, and it's been 30 years in the future for about 30 years. So who knows when that's going to come? Um, that has a lot of benefits, but generally we're dealing with fission. Okay, so fission reactors. So you use generally uranium. Different, and there are different isotopes found in nature. The one that is important for fission reactions is uh, uranium-235. Um, these radio, radioactive isotopes are unstable and they emit radiation. And we can start fission reactions and use those fission reactions to heat water and run turbines. That's what we generally do. Uh, not, always, not always water, though. Okay, and another thing to, to realize is when you're dealing with radio, radioactive um, uh, fuels and also contaminants, that they decline in radioactivity um, using kind of an exponential decay. So there's a half-life. So um, if, if the half-life is a, is a year, every year the amount of radiation present will be half, okay? Okay, so... To understand uh, nuclear waste and nuclear fuels, we have to understand the idea of a nuclear fuel cycle. So this cycle, in this cycle, the, there are waste created through every point. So initially when you're mining, there are tailings that are produced that are radioactive. Uh, when you enrich uh, for uranium-235, there's waste that are produced. Uh, and again, uh, something you, that has to be pointed out, often this takes a lot of coal energy, so we're not totally uh, separated from fossil fuels. You have to make the fuel assemblies. There are wastes produced here. Uh, at the reactor, wastes are produced. There are low-level wastes. There's spent fuel. And also when you decommission a reactor, that has to be disposed of. So that's, the, that's important to remember that there's a fuel cycle. Okay. Let's look at uranium. I mentioned there were diff different isotopes. There are three naturally occurring isotopes. Uh, the most common is uranium-238, and that uh, is not easily used as fuel. We'll talk about how it may be uh, in a little while, but generally we're using uranium-235, and that's less than 1% of the uranium that we find, so that has to be concentrated. Uh, there's also uranium-234, which is a, a minor contaminant. And once we concentrate for uranium-235, that's, that's called a, a fizzle isotope, it can um, help to create a fission reaction. And you can see that in this slide here. So you'll have uranium-235, and if you're able to hit that with a neutron, uh, heat is released. It's that second law of thermodynamics. Fission fragments and also... Uh, multiple neutrons, and these neutrons can further create fission reactions. Now, if this was to go out of control, and we don't want that to happen, uh, you'd have something like a, uh, an atom bomb. But we are able to control this, this fission reaction 
using heavy metals that can suck up neutrons. Okay, so once that's occurring, we can use the old generator um, system that we use, for, for example, uh, to burn coal. It's a similar reaction. So with the coal, we, we heat up water, steam runs a turbine, electricity is produced, we cool it off and start again. We do almost the same thing with nuclear energy. Here, this end, very similar where we produce electricity, but now we're using uh, this reactor to heat up water and create steam, which is used to create steam in another system. Again, these are separated. This is another way to uh, prevent uh, radioactivity leakages. And there's a reactor vessel that also does that. Same deal. Okay, and here's a, uh, a close-up of the fuel and control rods. Again, the control rods, heavy metal. They can suck up neutrons and control the reaction so it doesn't get too hot. Okay, so I said we use 235, and we use those in burner reactors. Um, now, it's interesting. If we just used, uh, you know, burner reactors, we can only use about 1% of the fuel. We'd probably run out of uranium-235 in about 30 years if we tried to give out half of our energy uh, through uh, burners. Breeder reactors make additional fissile material from uranium-238 generally, it creates plutonium. Um, that's good. It's a fuel. However, it is weapons grade and people get worried about that. Breeder reactors are also very uh, expensive. Uh, the Super Phoenix breeder reactor in, in France was recently closed down. And if we use breeders, we could get out a lot further with our fuel. So that makes uh, an interesting case. Should we or shouldn't we? Okay, so we're going to stop there and we're going to talk a little bit uh, next time on radiation and what are some of the, the, the risks to, to radiation and, and the different types. So I'll see you again next time on Global Environment.